Hi there, my name is John, and you are watching the first episode of Learning Modern with the Discard.com. Today I'll be joined by my good friend Corey Murphy, host of the Card Knock Life podcast, also writes for CardKnockLife.com, uh, a website where they mostly focus on modern, but they sort of dip into other formats as well. Corey's been playing modern for quite a bit longer than me. It really is his um, his specialty there, and he's been gracious enough to uh, hop on the line with me, loan me a deck, teach me how to play it. And really the goal here is to just get a little bit more familiar with Modern, learn some things about the format, learn how to play this specific deck. Today we'll be looking at Eldrazi and Taxes, a deck that, that looked particularly interesting to me out of the ones that he offered. We're going to make some fumbles along the way, but that's okay. It's really about learning from those mistakes, doing better the next time. So without further ado, let's check it out. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, this deck here. What are you showing me today? All right, so as you know, as you're explaining this to me, I kind of had a, a different understanding of what we were going to do. I thought we were going to uh, fight each other, but I like the idea of you kind of taking this through a couple of games and like maybe we kind of talk talk through it as a team. I think that would probably be best. So I give you Death and Taxes, which debatably is one of the tougher decks to play without experience in the format because of how much it's like metagame oriented. Like the, the whole point of this deck is basically to lock decks out based on their particular play styles. So you really need to know what you're up against. So that said, it might also be a really good choice to kind of delve into the format because we can sort of talk about what, what the opponent's got. Okay. So this is it's actually called Eldrazi in Texas because it plays like the Eldrazi temples and the colorless lands to get like Thought Not Seers, Wasteland Stranglers and stuff. Okay. But there is a Death and Taxes deck as well, which is like basically similar to this. It's, it's about 60% the same thing. And there are like mono-white versions and black-white versions that just play this plan of Leon and Arbiter plus uh, like Ghost Quarter or Path to Exile, just basically shutting your opponent out of the game. They can't search for lands when, when the Arbiter is in play. So we'll go into the details of that in a moment. But I okay. think, John, we better take a look at the uh, what the metagame actually looks like right now. Okay, let's pull that up. You sent me a link here. Uh, I think we're looking at, uh, yeah, some MTG Goldfish. All right, what would you like to look at? By the way, I'm, right. I'm piloting things here. Corey's watching remotely, so uh, hopefully you don't fumble through too much. Where would you like to start? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the backseat driver. Um, the the uh, So first of all, take a look. The, by the way, MTG Goldfish is a fantastic source for this. I'm sure many of you are all already familiar with the website. But when you click on the metagame, they have a pretty regularly updated metagame report based on the 5-0 league results. Um and big tournament finishes. And so that said, the way that they post those league results now where they kind of take one of each deck in like five random decks that have mm -hmm. five owed and post those, it kind of affects this, you know, in, in sort of a weird way. Whereas back in the day before this change made, it took place, if there were like, you know, 95% Eldrazi Tron decks that five owed the league, you're going to see like four or five Eldrazi Tron lists posted and nothing else. So it kind of it screws up the reading of what percentage of the meta each deck takes on, but that might be a good thing. Some people would argue it's a bad thing. Okay. But it might cause some diversity. That's the point. Anyways, the 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 interesting thing about modern is it's so diverse, and like you know, standard is is a pretty diverse place right now too. Mm -hmm. But you can make the argument that there really are like three like solid deck choices in standard. Yeah, um, I mean, and you're, then you're pretty much playing red. Range. You're playing red, or you're playing energy, or maybe one of the uh, one of the control like, types, but really yeah, not like too a much. Control. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing just looking here. You know, one thing that that I think some people like to do when they look at metas is they'll say, uh, you know, this deck splashes for Scarab God, so it's four color energy instead of just saying it's the same deck, but it splashes for Scarab God. Uh, so you end up with maybe a little bit of false diversity there sometimes, but. Looking at this screen here, it, I mean, it looks like pretty, pretty different decks just by looking at some of the featured cards and the colors they're playing and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, start by looking at the meta percentage underneath the deck names. And for example, Eldrazi Tron is the biggest share right now, 6.13%. And that said, you could probably go through like three leagues without even seeing an Eldrazi Tron deck. It's, it's very likely that there just isn't going to be one. Statistically, it, it's possible that, that that would be the case, even though it's the most played deck in the format. But that's okay. not always been true for modern. You know, we've had modern where when Birthing Pod was around, and and that was about thirty percent of the meta game at some points, which which is pretty significant, but actually pretty comparable to like what standard looks like often. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so what I'd say is let's click through a couple of these. Start with Eldrazi Tron. Why don't you yeah. click on that? Click on Eldrazi Tron, and, and what it'll do is it'll it'll kind of populate with like the most common uh, like list or the most recent finish or something along those lines. Okay. But I'll give you an idea for what you're what you're dealing with. <clears throat> So Tron is one of the one of the archetypes in modern um, in general, and there are multiple Tron decks. There's blue Tron, there's green red Tron, and there's Eldrazi Tron. And this is the colorless Tron, the most uh, it's a pretty new deck, actually. It hasn't been around for too long. But the idea with Tron is that you've got the three Urza's lands, Urza's Mine, Power Plant, and Tower. Mm-hmm. Each of them uh, combined to create seven mana total. Yeah. And so classic, if you kind of pass over those. Here. Yeah, classic cards. And so the the other benefit is they can add one colorless mana on their own, which is obviously, you know, basically like in in itself, it's a color that produces mana for these Eldrazi creatures, you know, so they require the colorless mana. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the big problems with the Tron decks was that they ran very little green, but they needed green to like play cards that like, were, like Ancient Stirrings, for example, that would either search out their lands or search out their creatures. And then also sometimes like Pyroclasm for like a little uh, mass removal in the, in the old green red decks. And they didn't have many options to get those uh, colors in their deck without playing like a bunch of chromatic stars and things like that. This okay. deck doesn't have to play chromatic stars because it's all colorless. And all the black cards in the deck are Eldrazi mana. So... It can like just go hard on the plan of just dropping like brutal Eldrazi beaters and just take you yeah. down. And this, these, mm-hmm. uh, these, these mana symbols here, these were uh, clearly a mistake. <laughs> What's yeah. that? The, these, uh, these uh, Phyrexian mana symbols. Oh, the Phyrexian mana. Clearly yeah. a mistake. Um, the ability to to get to play this basically in any deck. I'm, I mean, if if you're willing to pay the four life to kill something, um, it's pretty pretty busted. Yeah, though I'd say that like if Dismember wasn't around, this deck w- might still exist with like Spatial Contortion or like mm-hmm. even Warping Whale is pretty good in these colorless decks. So as he, as you can see, he's got the Warping Whale on the sideboard. So Eldrazi Tron, the, let's look at this as as far as what we need to look out for with our Death and Taxes deck. We won't do this for everything; it'll take us mm-hmm. a long time to go through the meta. But um, what they're gonna do is they're gonna like basically start to take over the game with Thought Not Seer by like controlling your your answer cards in your hand, and then they're gonna beat you down with reality smasher so reality smasher is pretty tough to deal with in for a lot of decks because you have to discard a card or the spell that you're using to target it gets countered yep. so if thought not serious taking your removal on four reality smasher is coming down on five you're going to hope to draw a different removal spell and then have another card to pitch to it so that's like three cards that are stripped um mm-hmm. by nine power worth of creatures on your opponent's side and yeah, reality smasher is definitely going to attack yeah you've also taken some some heavy beats by then <clears throat> So you got to watch out for that. Chalice of the Void is worth mentioning, too, on the bottom there. It's uh, XX for an artifact. Um, and that's a pretty big piece of this deck because it it shuts a lot of other decks down. Um, like Burn has a real hard time when Chalice of the Void is set to 1. Um, it, you know, Storm, for example, same thing. Mm-hmm. And so they can basically find your pressure point, and they can counter that pressure point with Chalice of the Void. In, a, in a Death and Taxes, if we can get our Aether Vial resolved, we don't have to worry so much about that. But we're there not really are casting times stuff where... Anymore. Yes, but we do have Path, and Path okay. is kind of like our way out of Reality Smasher and Thought Not Seer. And so if they put Chalice on one, which they're probably going to do, that's kind of what this mm-hmm. deck does... Um, we're, we're, you know, we're going to have to like basically put some creatures out that, that deal with that problem. Okay. So, all right, let's move on to another deck. Yeah, let's do that. So there was a time where Grixis Death Shadow was the biggest share of the meta. Now it looks like it's about 5.32%. Again, that might have to do with the way that they post the results now. Um, but this is another one that's worth looking at because it kind of represents like a tempo or aggressive, like sort of. Like, similar to Burn, the way that we have to play this one, mm-hmm. this deck's going to basically win very fast, you know? Uh, but but it plays only 19 lands in three different colors. So in, Eld- in uh, excuse me, Death and Taxes, Eldrazi and Taxes, whatever you want to call it, we have the ability to basically pick away at the opponent's lands with, like, Ghost Quarter, Leon and Arbiter, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So we have a little advantage in that if they stumble. However... If they stabilize and they just they just their tempo runs well, it's it's kind of tough for us to compete compete with this one. And this so. deck, this deck's not too far <clears throat> off from uh, Grixis Delver, which was really popular for a while. Correct. Uh, card wise, it's not, but it plays very differently than Grixis Delver. 
Grixis Delver plays like Lightning Bolt, Snapcaster stuff, um, and it's got more counter spells. This deck plays more hand removal. It plays Inquisition and Thoughtseize, which gotcha. is tough. It's tough. It really you really like benefit from going first against this deck. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay, so um, the, I guess let's see what to watch for in this deck. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Death Shadow is the big piece of this one. Yeah. Like, it's a 13 13, or, you know, whatever. It might be a 12 12 at the most, I suppose. But that's mm-hmm. the thing that's going to kill you fast. So, we play a Marine Crusader in the main deck and one in the side, which has protection from black because it stands up pretty well against this particular deck. Look at all the removal Fatal Push, um, mm-hmm. Kologon's Command, Terminate. Nothing can target it, and all of its creatures get blocked by it. So, yeah. that's good news for us. But he's got, like, Kozlex Return in the sideboard, which pretty much kills all of our creatures. So you have to be prepared for that. Um, typically, we have, like, a card called Burnton's uh, Forge Tender, uh, which is protection from red. You can sacrifice it to prevent, prevent all damage that a red spell would deal this turn. And that card, for us, is really good against, like, mass removal in red, like Anger of the Gods and stuff. But Kozlex Return is colorless. So yeah. it's, like... Pretty much the perfect trump for that that pro- that plan. So mm-hmm. heads up. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> um, now Co- Kozilek's not in all all of these Death Shadow decks, but it is pretty common. You'll see something mm-hmm. like that. They might run Anger of the Gods, so it it, it makes it even tougher to sideboard. Yeah. So. And this, all right, let's go can, into, uh, this. Yeah. I guess they're not triggering at least in this build. They're not triggering that second clause, right? They're just using this as as an mm-hmm. instant speed colorless pyroclasm, right? Right, yeah, that second clause. I mean, you're pretty much dead after the first clause goes mm-hmm. off. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything All else right, you want to take a look, look at? at? Maybe, maybe one more here. Um, let's get okay. Gifts. Let's just mention gifts. It's it's a deck that. Well, go ahead and open it up. I suppose pop it up. Um, gifts is a deck that wins with uh, storm spells, namely grape shot or empty the warrens. Yeah, and this is a. Uh... This is a pretty. I think the, these kinds of decks are pretty easy to to follow what they're what they're trying to do. I mean, they're going to do most of their stuff in one turn, right? <clears throat> they're going to do most of their stuff in one turn, with the exception of like playing a Goblin Electromancer uh, mm-hmm. Brawl. And the way that you beat them is you have to kill those creatures. They only play eighteen lands, which is even fewer than the last deck. So they're really low on lands, but those creatures are really what allow them to go off. Mm-hmm. Which is different than the old gifts decks, which used to play Pyromancer's Ascension. We won't get into that, but <laughs> but the plan now is now we have two creatures that can reduce cost by one. So when you play a uh, ritual type spell, um, like Manamorphos is the best example of that. Yeah. It costs one mana to get two mana and draw a card, so it really helps your engine continue to go. Mm-hmm. And then eventually they'll flash everything back with uh, Past in Flames, which is on the bottom there. Yep. And so they can just basically start all over again. Mm-hmm. Once they've cast 19 spells, they'll cast Great Shot and deal 20 damage to your face. Mm-hmm. So we and have I guess, cards. Uh, being able to remand their own spells is sort of another another classic storm storm trick. Remand yeah, your own, yeah it uh, is. Remand your own Grape Shot and get to get in there sort of faster than than expected. Yeah, remand remand is pretty darn good for them. Um, also, Brawl notably can draw you an extra card and discard a card when you counter a spell. Mm-hmm. So with Remand, it's like you're kind of playing a little uh, catalog, draw two, discard one, um, to help you find the pieces. And you can pitch like a Pass in Flames, for example, because it has flashback. Okay. Um, and then uh, for, for this one, a lot of Death and Texas decks will run cards like Eidolon of Rhetoric. We don't have it in our list, which maybe we probably should. And what does the Eidolon <laughs> but, do? Idol on Rhetoric is basically um, one and two, uh, excuse me, one white and two colorless for a one four. Uh, players can't play more than one spell a turn. Gotcha. So it's pretty easy to see why that's great against yeah. this deck. Um, it's also good in other situations. Like if they snap caster mage and try to flash something back, mm-hmm. that flashback spell would be the second spell. So they can't cast that. Um, and it stands up pretty well as a one four against aggressive creatures in burn and slows them down a lot too. So that, there are lots of reasons why we should probably have Eidolon in our deck. <laughs> we'll have to modify that. Yeah. Well, this is sort of going to be a learning experience for me. I'm not too worried about uh, whether we have the most optimized deck. Uh, one thing I, I do want to mention, um, sort of as as uh, part of the background of why I wanted to bring you bring you on here uh, to walk me through some modern here is I think. A lot of people probably have noticed these numbers up here. 
Like modern is is not really a cheap format. A, a lot of magic's not not that um, affordable to begin with. It's part of why I like limited um, because you can sort of just go in and pay 10, 15 bucks and you get a night of, of playing. I'm sure that adds up, but um, yes, one it, thing, does. <laughs> it does add up. It does add up. But uh, one thing that, that um, is really great about modern or something that's, that, uh, that I've always liked about it is you see a lot of these same cards coming up over and over and over again. So I think if you can find something that is competitive in the meta you're playing in and that you like to play, I feel like you can hang on to a lot of those pieces uh, for quite a while. Like, I don't think Fatal Push is going anywhere anytime soon. Snapcaster Mage is probably going to be good for as long as you can play him. Um, Forever. It just, yeah. It just seems like there are a lot of cards that uh, that stick around for a long time. But that said, you know, if you're looking to, um, at least for me, the, the way that I want to spend my money, if I'm looking to jump into a format where I'm paying $500 on the low end, maybe, for, for some of the decks we've seen here... Um, you know, I want to make sure that it, that it's going to be worth my money, and I know what I'm doing. So, uh, definitely happy to have somebody like you, Corey, who can come in here and sort of show me a couple different decks, and teach me te teach me what you know, Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> well, this deck this deck is an example of like that being a problem in some cases too, because uh -huh. wh whereas like Serum Visions is played a lot, and look, it's nine dollars for a play set. That's kind of a lot for a common, right? Sleight of Hand is is not really played a lot. Sleight of Hand is a card that basically shows up in this deck. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you want to play a modern deck, the card that is, like, important to its strategy, even if it's only appearing in this one deck, is going to be expensive. So you're kind of pigeonholing yourself in that way. And it's not always true of all decks. There are some decks that play, like, more versatile cards and more uh -huh. utility cards. But if you're looking to get into the format, like... Affinity is probably not a good place to start if you're not sure if you like Affinity because the cards in Affinity that cost money are like Affinity cards only, you know, like yeah. uh, Arcbound Ravager, for example, it doesn't get played in really any other decks, but maybe like this Absent Connors deck. So Grixis style decks have a lot of cards that like are valuable, like Snapcaster Mage and Colgon's Command that get played in like just about every Grixis colored like deck. So you have a lot of options in that way. Mm hmm. So um, keep that in mind. Let's let's look at just one more here because okay. I, I think we are we have to talk about burn really. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, burn is one of the inevitabilities of modern. Um, it's been around forever and it gets played a lot, particularly in paper, because it is one of the most affordable decks to put together. Um, and so this burn deck that we're looking at here is a red white burn deck, which I think is kind of the way that people are going with these lately. But sometimes they have green for wild Nakato. But burn is it's pretty easy to explain. It's it's mm -hmm. fast and it just shoots you down as as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean that's classic uh, red deck wins strategy, right? You there just are stick low to the ground and yeah, yeah. Obviously, like life gain is a good way to combat burn. Um, and we have like some life gain in our deck and we'll go into that in a moment, but burn plays a lot of cards that are very anti life gain, like searing blaze, uh, not searing skull crack. I'm sorry. Skull crack. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, the green red versions will also play a Tarkus command too. So they're okay. obviously aware of life gain and they're going to be holding onto those spells until they can, you know, stop your obstinate bailout from getting you life and, and keeping mm -hmm. you in the game. But playing against this deck is very much like an attrition battle. Like once they run out of cards and they're top decking burn spells, you can you can basically plan on any non land card doing three damage to you, because just about all of them do. So it's easy to do the math once you get them into top deck mode. But when they've got a, a handful of cards, it becomes a little trickier to play. Do they do so, anything here to to fill their hands back up? No, hmm. nope, not really. Um, they just, you know, the, the deck is so, so fast that it's just like, yeah, why waste your time on that? It's pretty, pretty, uh, yeah, it kind of hinges on their, their opener, you know, like they have to keep a good opener and they have to play it carefully because once you resolve a life gain spell, if you're getting five life, that sets them back two cards, gotcha. right? Because if, if the cards deal basically three damage. So that's why they're, they're, they're so, they're main decking for skull crack, you know, like they, they've got to have a plan for that. Yeah. Um, but we've got Core Firewalker, which is very, very good against Burn for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, let's. Should we go to the deck? Let's do it. Let's play All some right. magic. All right. Looking forward to this. Anything else you want to point out here before we move on, or should we just hop in a queue? Um, yeah, I mean, we should probably look a little bit at these cards. Like, we're, we're an Aether Vile deck, 
So you kind of have to know what your options are with Aether Vial so you know mm-hmm. what to set it at. You don't want to just keep taking it up to five and six, like your top end is three. So Aether Vial is going to give you a counter every turn, and then you can tap it to play a creature that has a converted mana cost equal to Aether Vial's cost. You have no options on one, so you're not going to do anything on one, which is why some decks play Thraven Inspector like, as a one or two of, because it's kind of a nice you know, card to put down on yeah. one when, when they don't think you got something. Um, on two, though, we can pop a th- uh, Leonin Arbiter into play, which is the cat that prevents all players from searching their library unless they pay two. And you can do that in response to a fetch land, for example. Mm-hmm. And if they activate the fetch land, you say tap Aether Vial, flash in Leonin Arbiter, they can't search their library for their land. They just they just basically strip mine themselves for one life. Nice. Um, you can also Tide Hollow Scholar them at instant speed after they've drawn a card on their turn, which is pretty fancy. So you're almost uh, almost clicking them, but maybe even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, and then after that, when you take it up to three, if you've tied Hall of Scholar a good card out of their hand, look at Wasteland Strangler. This card is made to process cards that are removed from the game, and that can include the cards that Tide Hall of Scholar removes from the game too. Yeah. So you basically get rid of that card forever, and then uh, eat one of their creatures. Yeah, yeah, which is really nice. Sometimes it's worth eating your own creatures just to exile their card. <laughs> okay. Um, Mirror and Crusader is obviously a good card to flash in and block a creature. He's got mm-hmm. double strike, protection from black and green. Like, that's a lot of relevant uh, stuff. Um, and then Flicker Wisp is a, is a huge piece of this deck as well. This will give you another way to exile a card and then eat it with a Wasteland Strangler because it will not come back until under, uh, oh, at a, okay. it gets uh, processed. But yeah. it also uh, activates your enters the battlefield abilities once again, and there's a lot of kind of interesting stuff you can do with the stack with this guy. We're not going to get into that right now. We're going to keep it pretty basic, but mm-hmm. um, involving using Aether Vial to put him in at instant speed. Cool. Um, yeah. Flicker Wisp is always a uh, always a card I've liked. This weird, gross bird thing. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a three one for three. What can you ask for? Yeah. Flying. It's got flying, and it gets rid of something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so good. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into this. Let's do yeah. some games. Okay, let's go play. Uh, can you tell <laughs> I've not done? <laughs> I've not let's done do a lot of constructed open play. Constructed open play. That's what we want. Yep, and do uh, tournament practice because they're all the freaking same let's anyway. Do that. <laughs> all right. Now we're gonna get some weird deck lists in this. Go ahead and hit play. Um, because people are, you know, just basically trying things out with, with nothing on the line. So I, I like to do cues even when I'm testing a deck yeah. out. Um, but for our purposes now, I think this is probably a good choice. Yeah. I promise you only one thing, Corey. I'm not going to F6 through a single turn during this, during this play. Okay. <laughs> Don't do it on accident, but we might do it on purpose. Okay. Because okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th- Moto is so different than paper. You know, like the game is 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 completely changed by that chess timer, and it's particularly true in modern, where there's just so much stuff going on. If yeah. you get comboed out in like two and a half minutes, or you get burned to death in like two and a half minutes, like that's one thing. But a lot of the more interactive games go along, particularly when you're playing like control. And this uh-huh. deck happens to do that too. So we've not only got to be efficient, but we've also got to like know when it's time to like F six through a turn. All right, let's see what's going on. We won the die roll. We're gonna go first. I think. Uh, I think it's pretty yeah. easy. Uh, easy choice. Yeah, to the make only there. deck that would not want to is probably Dredge in this format. This feels pretty bad okay. to me. Why? <laughs> uh, well, I like to play stuff, and uh, <laughs> this doesn't seem like a very good. You're not gonna have. Too, you're not gonna have enough fun with that path to exile. No, yeah, I think we're gonna go mulligan. This is this is one thing that I think um, I'm particularly interested to learn about modern is when and why to mulligan i think um you know i obviously i've been playing the game for (laughs) for 20 ish years so i i know how to play um but you know the specifics of modern are really what what i'm looking forward to learning great (laughs) yeah that's not much better i I feel like that's actually worse Corey. if (laughs) if that uh go ahead mulligan yeah if that first hand had an aether vial in it it might have been keepable all right, this, this one right. is actually doable. It's pretty bad, but we don't want to go much lower than five yeah. cards, so let's keep in keep scry. That. I feel like we want to throw that on the bottom. Most definitely. Yeah. Okay. Where would you lead here? Would you lead with the courtyard uh, tapped? Well, there, it doesn't have many implications 
because just about anything you play is going to give away what you're playing. But put that Eldrazi Temple into play, and let's make them think that we're on Eldrazi Tron. Okay. We're going to pass the turn here. And then this is where you F6, John, because you want to save some time, and uh, you really don't need to um, interact with anything. Yeah. So, like I said, since they're... Oh, he's on Storm, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are quite a few decks in this format, as we've seen. We only looked at three of them, really. Um, this is pretty pretty obvious what you want to do here. Thalia is really good against Storm. Yeah, so I think we're going to get the Courtyard and get Thalia out there. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything for us to eat here. I don't really see the value there. Right. And we're going to need that uh, Wasteland Strangler for his Brawl, too, so... Hold on for that. Um, but yeah, Thalia taxing all his spells is pretty good when he wants to play like as many spells as possible. Basically counteracts the Goblin Electromancer's re reduction. Okay. Ugh, nasty. All right, put that Ghost Quarter in play. They get a basic when we destroy it, or? Okay. Um, they get a basic, yeah. And so you, you could probably attack here because we're gonna we're gonna be the aggressive deck in this game so let's just get in as much as we can um now if you're, those if you're decks, the opponent here do you think that they would want to make this trade or no probably not no absolutely not he's not gonna block that he'll probably attack us but i think that's okay yeah should we okay i'm, I'm gonna pass the turn here yep pass but the turn is it worth getting them well i guess they've already got a they've got an island out so if we destroyed the steam vents they probably just get a mountain or something and they're probably not too far off. Yeah, but here's the other thing with modern, and this is where this deck becomes tricky. Um, knowing your opponent's deck list is really important, and I know that that blue-red deck you're playing against plays like one mountain, one basic mountain. So hitting that steam vents is a pretty relevant play. In fact, I'd probably do that right now. At the end of the turn, I should say. No, well, he's not doing anything else now. No, don't do it now. Oh, shoot. No? Now. Okay, so now that he's tapped out, <laughs> now you're going to give him a mana. So that's kind of oh, dangerous. Oh, I thought it comes into play tap. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Oops. I thought he was going to pass the turn. Um, if he's untapped, it would be good. But now he's got... Uh, he could actually go off right now. <laughs> well, this is he why probably, I have you he here, right? Won't. Yeah. This is, this is why I've got you here. <laughs> this is why we're in the... In the <laughs> oh, he's going to grape shot our Thalia, which hurts. Yeah. Oops. Okay, that's all right. So now we're going to ghost quarter his mountain next turn, though, and at least we'll keep him off of the uh, red. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty bad. I feel like that was a pretty bad play. <laughs> See, all right. I need so to read he, the no, this is, this is good. <laughs> John, he missed a land drop, so he didn't have a third land to play. So if you hit his uh, mountain, he's going to end up with two islands. He didn't have a steam fence. So that should at least buy you some time. <laughs> should I do it now? or? Yeah, okay. I would do it. I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still not playing mm -hmm. that. Okay. Let's click on the Yeah, do it land. now because that's going to get another land out of his deck, which is pretty insignificant, but that's thinning his deck, you know, thinning the mana out of his deck, and he's going to want to draw land. All right, now pass. You may want to click the um, under his uh, icon, his avatar picture. There's that little uh, gravestone. Click on that gravestone that says five, because we want to keep track of what's in his graveyard. And you might want to do the same thing for your deck. Just, I don't know. I guess it probably doesn't matter so much, but definitely want to be aware of what's in his yard. This is a pretty, this is a pretty terrible hand. <laughs> um, and, I th and, and also a terrible misplay. Like, I, f I feel like... Looking at the way this played out and knowing how wrong I was with h how this card worked, <laughs> um, I feel like we could have stopped him from from being able to to kill Arthalia for like entirely, right? Um, no. Well, because that's a sorcery. Yeah, it is a sorcery. Yeah, I guess you're right. So if we did it both on our turn, yeah. All right. All right what do you think you do here? Um, I feel like we can take. We can take three from them, so I kind of feel like getting the Shambling Vent down. I don't like yeah. throwing this out there without value just to trade, so I kind of want to play the Vent. Yeah, you definitely want the Vent. Either way, you've got enough mana to play Wasteland, Wasteland Strangler if you wanted to, because okay, Temple yeah. will give you two for Eldrazi. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is another turn where we just do nothing and pass the turn. Fortunately, he's hurting for mana over there, so we yeah. might just happen to draw something relevant soon. 
So knowing our deck list, there, there's not a lot that can really dig us out of this hole. Um, oh, this is not good. Okay, well, this, this will give us some experience with uh, with um, this deck. Yeah, Gifts Ungiven, a uh, famously bad card to play against just because you, you can almost never do it right. <laughs> I, I think that when you're playing this deck, you kind of have a plan for what you're going to get. But in his situation, knowing that he's got just two blue uh, sources, the rituals are, are not online. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance he gets, like, lands? Is no. Or, yeah, I, guess, I suppose source? there are. Yeah, he could get... Um, yeah. yeah, there you go. Steam Vent, Shiv and Reef, Scalding Turn. Okay, so this is all bad for us. I think we lose this game, but um, why don't you give him, like... Give him that Scalding Tarn and give him the Passing Flames because he already played a Steam Vents. Mm -hmm. It's possible that he's only got two in his deck. It's unlikely he's probably got the full four, but okay. at least make him hurt himself. Yeah, so we'll um, want to we'll, we'll pitch these two to the yards, right? The Steam Vents and the, the Reef? Yeah, I think so. Give him the Tarn and the Passing Flames. Okay. And that may be wrong. I don't know, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I guess we will. Okay, like I said, knowing our deck, the best draw for us right now, it, <laughs> there's not much, but uh, we, we probably want a Thought Knot Seer to, to uh, get whatever he's got in his hand that's going to allow him to go off. Usually the best target for that is like, I don't know, Manamorphos and, at some points, but it, it really depends on what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Now he's got probably about three Grape Shot in his deck, and we saw one of them. Um. So grape shot's not a oh. very great target. I feel like casting desperate ritual means uh, that means he's might... got it. Yeah, he's going. He's going off. I've, I've um, just auto yielded. I don't think there's anything we could do. So yeah, so auto yielding is great because the time is important. So you've got 20 minutes on your clock. He's got 21 minutes on his clock. It's probably going to take him unless he's like uh, pretty verse uh, with this deck. It's probably going to take him about five or six minutes to do this. Or he's just going to kill us with a grape shot because we're at 11. <laughs> yeah, remand it. Yeah, we're dead. Should I just concede? Or make him waste his clock? Um, You can make him waste some clock, but it, yeah, at this point, it doesn't make a huge difference. You can concede. It could screw up, too, you know? It's hard yeah. to count, so... <laughs> I am always um, okay with letting my uh, letting my opponent. You, well, no. <laughs> yeah, he he remanded that, so that's in his hand. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this sideboard. All right. You tell me what you think we need to put in. What I we think need we to do need first. the forge tender. Yeah, definitely that. Let's see. Here. That's going to protect your guys from lightning bolts, or uh, if you were to try to grape shot your Dahlia. Maybe firewalkers. <laughs> Yeah, Firewalker's pretty good. Imagine that against a uh, uh, Grape Shot. Uh, what what about Rest in Peace? If they're bringing stuff back from the yard, their flash. I mean, how often do they do the flashback on on that stuff? Very often. You want Rest in Peace for sure. Okay, that's kind of the way that that deck goes. What do you think about Fatal Push? I mean, it kills their two creatures. They're not playing yeah. any other creatures. Remember that that deck hinges on those two creatures, so we definitely want that, too. Um, now, he's probably bringing in... You have to kind of be one step ahead of him, too. So he's probably bringing in Anger of the Gods. Okay. Um, and so we've got Burnt and Forge Tender in the deck. We've got the one of. So that's, that's like our one out to that card. Okay, let's look at our list now. We have to get rid of some cards. Obviously. Yeah. Anything else up here we want to bring in? No, I think we're... Well, even Mind Sensor, actually, probably, because we want to stop his gifts and his... Uh, if we can catch oh, yeah. his Scalding Time, we might, we might be able to keep him out of red. Um, okay, now this is tough. We've got to cut six or seven cards, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And our cards are all pretty live against him. Moon Crusader is no good. Get rid of that. <clears throat> We could probably stand to shave some of the Eldrazi Displacers. How many of them? Um, maybe all of them. I don't know. That might be wrong, but 
Um, all right, Flicker Wisp. What does that do for us? Guess. Why don't we cut? Why don't we cut two Flicker? Ah, shoot. Yeah, let's cut two Flicker Wisps. Okay. And that brings us to sixty. Yeah. Okay. Send it back. Um, yeah, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Okay. <clears throat> well, it can't go much worse than me casting um, or using the the. Uh, I think it can't go much time. worse than you mulling to five and having nothing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. What do you think of this one? Uh, I feel like it's going to be pretty bad if we don't hit a second land within the next two turns. Yeah. But, what do you think? I mean, worst case scenario, he he's going to kill our Aether Vial, right? Yeah, and then we're kind of stuck doing nothing. Um, the deck doesn't really play much that he would be likely to board in against us. Aether Vial. Okay. Um, he might have... I, I would keep it, I guess okay. is what I'm trying to say. Go for it. it. I mean, Turn one Aether Vial is pretty powerful. Yeah, and it feels like... like and you've with, got a path. Realistically, within within a couple turns here, like we've got solid plays for at least a, a few turns here, whether we draw lands or not, I think. Yeah, yeah, and you've got the necessary creature removal, and that's going to get you to Wasteland Strangler processing, too, because you're going to exile this creature. This is going to automatically... I don't have to set a stop, do I? For what? Oh, yeah, for that? Wrong. No, it'll it'll check check it with you every, every turn. By the way, if you have any feedback about where I have stops, um, that would be great too. Because I've played now, you know, a couple dozen drafts on Mitko, but um, obviously, when you want to stop in other formats might be different. Mm hmm. Um, you might want one at his upkeep or draw step during certain points in the game. But you can turn those on when you know that it's relevant. Yeah. Like we we might want to put one on the draw step once we have our aether vial on too, so we can uh, scholar his his hand. We'll say yes to that ability. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all right. Hey, look at that! I can scholar him right now. Yeah. All right, so just to make sure I know this, what it's doing, they reveal their hand. I choose a non-land card and exile it. So if we get lucky here, next turn we could scholar them again and wasteland strangle them, which could be pretty tasty. Yeah, you gotta press OK now. Yeah. Yeah, ideally that would be good if he if he plays a creature. Um, All right. So I kind of feel wow. like we want to get rid of this. Well, what else has he got? He's got Manamorphose, he's got Desperate Ritual, he's got Steering Visions and Sleight of Hand. Um, I think that maybe you got to get rid of one of those Rituals, because next turn, if he plays a land, oh, he he's going to play go Pyretic Ritual into Manamorphose, mm -hmm. into Desperate Ritual. Well, yeah, he kind of... Get the Manamorphose. Okay. I think that's right. That keeps him from having you know, whatever color, it sticks him to just red, right? Yes, it sticks him to just red. So then if he goes off with the rituals next turn, he doesn't have anything to do with it unless he draws another Manamorphose somehow. Yeah. Which, just our luck, he, he probably will, but... <laughs> yeah. Now, after I play a card like Skuller, I always put click on the eyeball underneath his avatar so I can see the cards he revealed. Yeah. And then as he's playing them... Delete the Scalding Tarn, because he played that, and delete the Sleight of Hand, because he just played that, so we can keep track of what he's got. <clears throat> I can just F6, right? Yeah. Unless you want to bluff like you got a one-mana spell, like a, a Judge is Familiar or something. Nah. I think, he's, I think he knows we don't. All right. So this way we know that he's got two rituals, a gifts. Yes, take it up one more. Good. All right. So we're going to play that. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's not much he can do. <clears throat> so should we should we vial in the Sculler now? I don't see why not. You should probably do it before he gets the mana to cast yeah. something. 
Yes, I'll use that ability. All right, let's see what he what he got here. More rituals. Okay. Yeah, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking he's going to have another land, so he's going to have mana to get the gifts online and all these rituals next turn. Uh-huh. And pass in That's flames. That's a pass in flames right there, though. Um, but I mean, this okay, is kind of so tough. Let, let's see. So he's going to have three mana. He's going to make... Uh, He's going to make two into three, into five, into seven. So he's going to have seven red and a blue. Plus, he can pass in flames using five, and then he can make that into, yeah. So I feel like maybe getting rid of the gifts. Because he doesn't have another gifts in his, in his yard. I feel like we kind of limit what he can do with all that mana next turn. What do you think? Um... I think that's, uh, I don't know. I think it's between the past and flames and the gifts. If you think, try the gifts. Well, but it I seems think, like you're think, leaning towards past and flames. I think that past and flames might be the, the answer, actually. Okay, so we're going to do what you said. And then if we get stomped, you can tell me. Uh, then you can blame much, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get that. Let's get the past and flames. And let's just run this guy out, I guess, right? Um, I... You know what? Just in yeah, let's do it because we've got path for his creature. Um, you almost want to do his thing, but just you. So you with this oh, guy, you have, you have to, to choose a creature. Oh, geez. but no, it's okay. <laughs> it, it, you don't have to do it though. Just choose a creature. Okay. And then. Oh, I click see what okay. you're saying. And then no. All right, get in there for two. We're in tech with all our one creature that can attack. <laughs> I think this is that's that's a good play because that rep represents seven damage on the table, which puts him on like, well, almost it. It's about a two turn clock if he plays another scalding turn. Yeah. Which there it is. Now we really need to draw another mana. <laughs> yeah. So are we leaving this on two now? Is I would take it up to three. Okay. Yeah, take it up to three. Um, um, though we have cut a lot of the three drops from our deck, we still got a lot of pretty relevant plays. Ooh, it that's a good spicy. one. Spicy. Yeah. Should we All attack right. first? I wanted to attack first. Yeah. Click cancel. Okay. See what he does. Now, remember, when you play your Thalia, you're not going to be able to cast your Path to Exile because it's going to be taxed by your Thalia. Okay. So then, should I... You can't use that for her. Oh, she costs three. two only. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all but right. it's worth playing her. Yeah, I, th I think that's good. And it's nice to know you have the out now if he bolts your Thalia because he needs to get, get through it, mm -hmm. that you can path whatever creature he puts in play. So this is where he's going to gifts. Mm -hmm. It's kind of has okay. to, right? You got to click OK. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't you delete those uh, cards from his hand that we've seen. So we've seen the gifts and we've seen the pyretic ritual. So now he's down to a pyrotic ritual and a des in a desperate ritual. Oh yeah, we saw these twice. Yeah. So he's gonna grab a, a pass in flames and probably a bolt. Mm -hmm. Some other things. <laughs> Hmm. When this Thalia resolves, he's going to have a hard time doing all the things he wants to do, so I'm interested to see where he goes with this. That Storm is a really tough deck to play. Yeah. It's, it look it kind of looks like it. All right. So we got some choices here. What do we want to throw in his yard? 
No, you tell me. What's what's going to happen to you? Well, I feel like the spot he's in, if we can keep Thalia in play, um, it's going to be hard for him to cast the Pass in Flames. Uh-huh. So we could potentially yeah, he... leave that in his hand. Uh, I don't like giving him the Grape Shot because it just seems like he gets to get out of this Thalia thing. Yeah, I definitely don't. So we'll chuck that in the yard. Um, Think about this. He's got two rituals in his hand that cost two. You're taxing mm -hmm. him. They cost three. So the most mana he can get out of his rituals is three total. Yeah. So he can convert three mana to three red mana, which is not good for him. So um, I think we want to throw maybe the, the Brawl in his yard because the Pyromancer is going to force him to use red and blue. Um, or what do you think yeah, here? That, that seems good. All right. May I have my Thalia, please, opponent? You have to click OK. There you go. <laughs> I clicked OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see if he's got it. No, we got it. He doesn't hey, look it. at that. Yeah, I didn't think there was any out there. All right. Anything that we want to do now that we're going to be um, on the draw again? Or do we want to um, just send it back? I don't know. We, we might want to consider changing that Dark Confidant to something. I don't know what. <laughs> um, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is Flicker Wisp, but it just dies so easily to that... Uh, Grape Shot will kill grape it. Grape Shot, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe just, just keep it keep it how it is. Uh, oh, right. you know what? Hang on. Oh, shoot. You submitted already. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. One thing to consider, too, he's probably going to be grape shotting us to death, but the other out is for him to play uh, Empty the Warrens and get a bunch of tokens and kill us. So, or the Pontiff is a possibility for that reason. Yeah. Uh, this oh, looks what spicy. happened? But now we got Flicker Wisp back in our deck. Did we keep two in the deck? Yeah, we, did, we didn't take them all out. Oh, okay. All right. Sometimes Moto screws up your sideboard. All right. So, what do you think? This looks like a keep to me. Yeah, definitely. You, you got uh, Thought Knots here on turn three. Now, it's a little bit non-interactive, like, early on. Like, the, on the draw, it's pretty slow. We don't. We need some removal is what we need to find. So are we going to lead with uh, Planes or Ghost Quarter here? I would lead with Eldrazi Temple, Aether Vial, because if you draw a second Eldrazi Temple, oh, you can cast Thought Not Surround too. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. Thought Nuts here is pretty good against him. For obvious reasons, taking a card out of his hand is good, but he doesn't have a whole lot that can kill a Thought Nuts here on its own. Okay. Like, he's got some, maybe some dismembers, you know, but Bolt's not going to do it. Okay, right. we might be in trouble here. So we kind of need a... We need some removal. That represents a, a turn three win. I guess we'll put that on there. Arbiter? Um, that doesn't suck. I wish we had two on our Aether Vial, mm -hmm. but we don't. So, so do we want to do planes in the Arbiter? Yep. Because that'll stop their gifts. Yeah, if we somehow manage to... Uh, make it through this next turn, we should be able to strip that ghost quarter or the uh, steam fence with our ghost quarter mm -hmm. and keep them off red. Which, not having blue is a problem for him um, because he can't cast his creature. But if he's already got the creature on the table, not having red is much worse because he can't cast the rituals to begin with. Okay, that's good news for us. Sleight of hand means he's digging for what he needs. Maybe it's a land. Ah, he can't he can't fetch right now. Seems nice. All right. And once you strip his steam vents, he won't be able to fetch ever unless he finds another land. So he's hurting for mana, John. We got this one. All right. Ooh, rest in peace. So do we ghost quarter and rest in peace? Yes, we do. So ghost quarter that uh oh. I guess it doesn't matter when you play Rest in Peace. Exile cards from all graveyards. Okay. So I think we do this first, right? I mean... It doesn't really make a difference. All right, let's do it first. Yes, sure. Okay. 
They don't run any counter spells, do they, besides remand? Yeah, I guess that <laughs> they might. <laughs> I mean, he's got mana for remand right now. Well, so we probably wanted we probably wanted to steam kill his steam fence first. You're right. I, I didn't even think of that. They run uh, dispels. They run ceremonious uh, rejection. Ooh, dismember. Okay. Gnarly. It happens. Yep, it happens. Where's the flicker wisp when you need it? It's right here. I know. But where's your third uh, counter on your Aether Vial? <laughs> uh, next turn. Yeah. Next turn, my man. I mean, we could have a pretty spicy turn where we ghost quarter them again next turn. We could have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's this one mountain, so that helps. Here comes Gifts I'm Given. Anything you put in his yard will be immediately RFG, so. Yeah, that's pretty good. We got that going for us. Does he have any way to deal with the rest in peace now that it's on the board? Yes, he's he, he might have wear and tear. Okay. Um but he doesn't seem to play white, so that's it's possible he doesn't have that. Um if he doesn't play white, he might be able to find a bounce spell. But if he's looking for it with Gibson given, we just put that one in the graveyard. Okay. Now, technically, he doesn't need the yard to win the game, mm -hmm. but it certainly hurts to not be able to pass in flames. Now, this is a, a bit of a rules, a rules question. The Electromancer doesn't reduce the cost of, fla of the flashback, does it? Um, well, like if you... Uh, if you pass in flames? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I think that it does, actually. Okay. Oh, I guess because right, you, well, you are casting it. All right. I feel like we shouldn't give him another Gifts Ungiven. Okay. What do you think? Agreed. All right. Let's get rid of that. And among these, if we are going to end up going the land destruction route, maybe we don't want him to have Manamorphose. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Manamorphose is the most important card in his deck. All right. Well, he does have a lot he, of digging he can do, so we'll see what yeah. he ends up doing here. Second Arbiter would have been really nice. We run two of the Arbiter, right? Um, I'm sorry, two of the... We run four of the Arbiter. Okay. I was looking up the Pass in Flames ruling here. <clears throat> I think it is cast. Okay, he's doing yeah, a lot of... Yeah, it, does, it does reduce the cost. <clears throat> he's looking for an out. Okay, he's, he's ritualing. Oh, they're going in the exile zone. That's right. Yep. Oh, okay, so he's going to grape shot us right now. <laughs> is he doing that just to, like, not waste his turn? Or is he actually... Uh, he might have oh, empty the go. warrens. He does. <laughs> yeah, we don't, have a, we don't have a backup plan for this right now, and that was my fault. We probably should have put it in the pontiff or the zealous persecution. I mean, even um, in this game, we wouldn't have been able to get the. I guess next turn we'd be, next turn we'd be able to put it in. We can maybe survive a turn though. We, um, no, we? we <laughs> I mean, you can exile one with the flicker wisp and block uh, a creature with the flicker wisp, and then thought not seer blocks another one. So I guess we one, throw two, the thought three. not seer into play. Yeah, definitely want to play the thought not seer. Man, those Aether Vials are, are not good draws. No. Okay, so he's got nothing in his hand. And I guess we just flicker this in on his turn. We don't have any reason to play it now, right? Might as well, yeah. Okay. 12, 13, 14. You're going to be at one life, John. <laughs> hey. That's what this is all about. Yep. Yeah. 
he is attacking with everything. So now flicker in, blink a token out of existence. <clears throat> yes, I would like to use Aether Vial's ability. Goodbye. All right. All right. Definitely want to block the Electromancer, right? Did I do my math right? That should be 11 then. 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, that's uh, 12. It's 12. Whoops. GG. <laughs> All right, Mike, Modest Michaels, you won this one. Modest McMichaels. Modest Brett Michaels won this one. Bummer. All right, so what should we have done differently that we didn't do? Let's take a look at that before we maybe wrap up this video here. Uh, you were mentioning bringing in the Pontiff because this would have just straight up killed all of their uh, creatures. Yeah, it's you know it's a it's a it's a call. It's it's like, mm -hmm. do you want to have that that chance that you're going to draw that card when you need it? Otherwise, it just sits in your hand and pretty much doesn't do anything because it doesn't kill his creatures. And the best case scenario for you is then you would give your creatures plus one plus one and kill him. But the other plan is just to like make sure you're all into the don't let him empty the worms in the first place plan. Okay. But I don't know. I think that I think that we probably do need it. You know, we probably need to have those in there. Would we somewhere. have wanted the uh, persecution as well? Uh, I don't know. Because it's kind of the same effect. Yeah, it's kind of the same effect, but but it's not a creature. You know, you can't aether vial it. Yeah, but it. I mean, it's an instant, so it's got that going. Yeah. I guess we didn't have black mana in that uh, in that game. So. Oh, we didn't. Mm -mm. We didn't have any yeah, black mana, so we wouldn't points. have been able to cast this. We would have been able to, actually, what's funny is if one of those, you know, Aether Vials or maybe that, uh, maybe that Flicker Wisp was the Pontiff, you know, that we would have gotten them then, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But once again, there are only two Pontiffs, you know, we would have yeah. had to have that in our hand. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose that, that we should, we should know from experience, and I haven't played this deck enough to know that, that the the uh, empty the warrens plan for that deck against death and taxes is pretty strong mm -hmm. um and so that's that's probably one of the reasons that we would include pontiff in the first place you know is for that purpose so we probably wanted to bring that in um i don't know how or where but uh but it, it deserved a spot in, in the deck gotcha. but either way that's a close game if you didn't have the empty the warrens you know we, we weren't gonna let him have it with the gifts ungiven that's for sure yeah and um and the, you know that Basically, this is that deck is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Typically, there's one one in the deck. Okay. So, so how much uh, how much do you think that punt in game one hurt our hurt our chances there? Uh, I think that hurt our chances, but that was an unwinnable game based okay. on the mulligan. Okay. Well, I feel like I've learned a lot here, uh, Corey. Uh, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I think we should do another one of these. Uh, you know, I was kind of thinking we do a few matches, but seeing seeing how long that ended up going with uh with all the all the teaching teaching you did there for me um i think it's good to, to keep this as one game uh what do you think about doing another one of these sometime yeah absolutely you can throw another deck up there and see what yeah. that's all about well i want to say everybody go check out Corey's site here he's got cardknocklife.com uh it's a podcast you mostly talk about modern um but you you sort of tiptoe into other stuff is that right yeah, we talk about standard quite a bit too, and commander. This last episode, you see the hostage situation episode. We're talking all about the uh, first weekend of Ixalan standard for a whole hour and fifteen minutes. Basically, spent the entire time on SCG. What was it? Atlanta, Dallas, something, okay. wherever it was. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks again. Uh, if you like this video. Uh, check back for more. Go visit the discard.com where I'm going to be putting up uh, a little bit of a write-up about what, I, what I've learned from this. Uh, Card Knock Life is going to have this video as well. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, thanks for coming on, Corey, and we'll talk to you later.